Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Today, we have some interesting stories for you. I implore you to stick around to the last story. A man was shot and killed in Montego Bay early this morning. You're going to want to hear about the details surrounding this man. Two of his brothers were already killed. Stand by for that. Now, when we start today's journey, we are going to be starting at White House in the parish of Westmoreland. Over the next few days, we are going to be traveling to South St. Elizabeth. We are heading to Pedro Plains. Sit back, relax, and drive with me. And talking about White House. A 64-year-old painter, he has been arrested and charged by the White House police in the parish of Westmoreland. He has been charged for assaulting an 84-year-old female missionary. This was due to an incident that took place yesterday morning, Thursday, February 9, 2023, about 11 o'clock. It took place on the grounds of the Jesus for Jamaica Church at White House. What we are learning is that the 84-year-old missionary, she was assisting in loading some lumbers that were being taken from the church onto a truck. It is said that while she was assisting in loading the truck, she had a piece of board in her hand. Now, I am not sure what happened, but the allegations are that a man, his name is Mr. Hubert Jones. He is 64 years old and he is said to be a painter. He is living at Petersville in the parish of Westmoreland. It is alleged that Mr. Jones, for whatever reason, he grabbed onto the piece of board that the lady had in her hand. As a result, a tussle ensued between 64-year-old Hubert Jones and the 84-year-old missionary. It is said that the lady, she received injuries as a result. The matter was reported to the police and 64-year-old Mr. Hubert Jones, he was arrested and charged. So, he'll be going to the courts shortly <laughs> ah boy now in this next story we are learning that fire partially destroyed a dormitory at the westwood high school in stewart town in the parish of trelawney this took place yesterday evening thursday february 9 2023 about 6 30. we are learning that a dorm mother and a female student they were alone in the dorm area when a loud explosion was heard coming from one of the dorms the dorm, which houses 38 female students, was then seen on fire. The dorm mother and the student, they managed to run outside to avoid being burned. The fire department, they were called and they were able to assist in bringing the fire under control. We are told that a lot of items owned by the female students who occupy the dorm as well as school properties were destroyed by fire. Investigations are being carried out to ascertain what really caused this fire. Thankfully, no one was hurt. <laughs> In this next story, <laughs> listen to this now. Listen carefully. Based on the information that we are getting, it could be either late December or early January. But what we are learning is that the home of a big time chopper, it was broken into. Now... <laughs> Do you know what is called a chopper in Jamaica? You don't? So, do you know what is called a scammer? You don't? Okay, listen to this. Hi, pleasant good day. This is Scott Parker from the Publishers Clearing House. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Who are you calling from? The Publishers Clearing House. This call is in regards to a certified check that you have won from the company. I must say congratulations. And how are you feeling? I won something. Well, uh, some money or something. That's correct. Publishers Clearing House, you're a second place winner here for $3.5 million. I must say oh, congratulations. $3.5 million? That's correct. Oh Have my goodness. Clear. Oh my goodness. Oh, I am so happy. Oh. 
this is here for you. And if you want to receive this package, all you have to do is have yourself a clean sheet of paper and a pen so I could provide you with some necessary information, okay? Okay, that will be good. Thank you. It what seems I like you want to receive your package here. No, not from a scammer, dude. No. So who told you you were a scammer? This is legitimate oh, dude, business. Dude, 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 come on. This scam is going all over the United States right now. We all know about it. We all know about it. You're there giving me talk. I have your f***ing ass, man. I'm going to call you. You. You don't have anything, dude. You're stuck on an island, man. You're not even in the United States. I have your f***ing address. I'm going to come over. You're a f That's what you are. That's when I come account. over, I'm going to kill your f***ing face, man. You One ain't doing nothing, dude. You don't have any money. They won't. You don't even have a passport. You can't do shit. Go That's pray. Go pray to Jah. Go pray to Jah right that, now. Go pray to Jah and say, please, man, please, man. There is no, there is no marijuana in Jamaica right now because of those bad storms. Oh you know, no! You know, I think you think that you're safe, but I'm gonna show you that I can hurt your fucking okay, face, man, and your do fucking it. family. You Fuck do it. it. You do it. You do it, Little boy. Here? You little boy from the village. And dollars and buy some AKs and you some fucking boy from, you have a stick you can't afford a gun you throw rocks and stones so if you never know before after listening to that you know what is called a chopper in Jamaica okay back to the story so we're learning that Kevin's house it was broken into and a safe was stolen that safe contained 15 million Jamaican dollars did you hear what I just said? The safe that was stolen from Kevin's house. We are told that it contained over 15 million Jamaican dollars. It is said that the break-in, it was not reported to the police. There were speculations as to who may have been involved in the break-in. And Kevin and his friends, they decided that they might go deal with it themselves. A robot taxi driver who drives a black Toyota Voxy. He was identified by the guys as one of the possible suspects. What the guys did was they put a plan in motion. Listen to this now. On Sunday, January 8, 2023, about 12 midday, the taxi driver, he was on the job in the town of Montego Bay when a guy came to him and told him that he wanted to charter him to go to Mayhall Hall in the parish of St. James. And... What I'm telling you are the allegations. Alright? So, the driver, it is said that he gave the guy a price and he agreed. They drove off but on reaching the stoplight at the Long Hill intersection. The passenger, he told the driver to take him to Leite instead. He told the driver he was going to buy something at Leite. It is said that on reaching Leite, they stopped at a location where they were joined by Kevin, who the money was stolen from, and another guy. They were in a car. It is said that they drove off and, on reaching a certain section along the road, they allegedly held up the driver at gunpoint and forced him into the car. They allegedly took him to Comfort Hall in St. James in some bushes where they held him at gunpoint and beat him with pieces of board all over his body. It is alleged that they were threatening to kill him if he didn't tell them who it was that stole the safe with the $15 million. After a while, it is said that the driver, he somehow managed to escape and he went to the police station where he made a report. Well, late last week, the guy who had chartered the taxi driver from Montego Bay, he was picked up by the police. He has since been charged. His name is Nalio. Fletcher, he is 33 years old and he's living at May Hall in the parish of St. James. Nalio, he has been charged for one, abduction, two, assault at common law, three, possession of a prohibited weapon, and four, assault at common law. The police, they are now searching for Nalio's brother, Adrian, and Kevin, the man who allegedly lose the 
15 million dollars in connection with this case <laughs> oh boy now this next incident it took place at mclaren gate in the chambers pen area in the parish of anova it took place wednesday night february 8 2023 about some minutes after 11 o'clock we are learning that residents of the area they reportedly heard gunshots being fired and they called the police when the police went and made checks they saw a man his name is andre murray but he was popularly known as speng speng is said to be in his early 30s speng was found lying on his bed in his room in a pool of blood he was inspected and he was found to have gunshot wounds to his upper body from all indication speng died on the spot when this crime scene was processed we are told that a number of nine millimeter spen shells were recovered from the scene the mayhem the me so let me ask you something <laughs> let me ask you something have you hit on the love button as yet if you have not yet done so remember to do it also if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed hit on the subscribe button as also hit on the notification bell then click all so that whenever we drop a new video you will be the first to be notified in the final story for today now in this story i'm gonna be giving you some information that you will not hear anywhere else unless them come over yes so <laughs> come copy listen this now that man on your screen his name is zeke's steve henry yes zeke's is his first name his middle name is steve and his surname is henry Zeke is 25 years old and he was living at Fisherman Lane in Hendon Road. Now, before I tell you what happened to Zeke, I'm going to give you some background information. 12 years ago, when Zeke was 13 years old, on Saturday, March 26, 2011, one of Zeke's brothers, Sarah Atkinson, he was shot and killed by hoodlums at Warica Hills in Hendon Road in Montego Bay. Word on the street at the time was that he was killed because of something to do with scamming. Three and a half years later, on Wednesday, October 22, 2014, another of Zeke's brother, his name is Kino Atkinson, he was shot and killed at Warica Hills in Hendon Narwood. Hoodlums kicked off his door, entered his home and shot him dead. Word on the street at the time was that the killing had something to do with gambling money. Fast forward to last year. Saturday morning, March 26, 2022. About some minutes to 11 o'clock. Now, you remember an incident that took place at Warica Hills where a group of persons, they were at a shop in the area when three hoodlums, all armed with guns, pounced on the group and opened gunfire at them. A total of eight persons were shot. Two men who were standing in the group and one of the hoodlums were killed. The hoodlum, he was killed mistakenly by one of his cronies. The persons who died were Lenroy Martin, popularly known as Ansman, and he was 25 years old. Damian Minto, he was 22 years old at the time. And the hoodlum who died, his name is Delano Spence. He was popularly known as Lanny. Among the five persons who were shot and injured was a 14 year old girl she was at her home in her bedroom doing her homework for school she was about 90 yards from where the shooting took place she was shot in her head the police they had recovered 50 9 mm pen shells from the scene the shooters they were known and they were readily identified one of them was identified as a hoodlum known as dudus Dudos, he was subsequently picked up and charged by the police. Dudos' correct name is Anthony Henry. He was 21 years old at the time when he was charged and he is from Hendon Narwood. Dudos, he was charged for three counts of murder and five counts of wounding with intent. So, let me see if you were paying attention. Let me check. Who did I start off this story telling you about? Yes, man. Zeke's Steve Henry. 
I also told you about two of his brothers that were shot and killed. I just finished telling you about Anthony Henry. He is facing three counts of murder and five counts of wounding with intent charges. What did I say Anthony Henry is called? Yes, man, he is called Dodos. Remember now, <laughs> Dodos, in this case, is the younger brother of Zeke's Henry. You got that? So, early this morning, Friday, February 10, 2023, about 3 o'clock, residents heard gunshots being fired in the St. James Street area of Montego Bay. When they went and made checks, they saw a man lying along the roadway, right in the vicinity of the Ruby's gas station. He was lying in a pool of blood. He's of a dark complexion. Slim built, about 6 feet 1 inch tall. He was dressed in a grey shirt, black jeans pants, red socks and a black and white Crocs slippers. The police, they were informed and when they went to the scene, they saw this man. He had gunshot wounds to his upper body. No one around knew who this man was but we are told that he had an ID card in his pants pocket. As it turned out, this man was none other than Zeke's Steve Henry. When this crime scene was processed, 2.40 spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Silver City, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, private a mash up Jamaica, criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Blood 